All right. All right, we've just jumped into our next video. And uh, I didn't miss a beat. It was interesting because it's uh, we're on the 17 second mark now of the second video. And it ended just when it became into sight. So right now I'm just going to fine tune that speed off right here. All right, so we're traveling um, what we call zero. I'm going to transfer my crew, which is... Uh, whoever's there into there. I'm going to transfer this guy, whoever's in there. All right, transfer. All right, what am I doing? Why is that capsule black? That's cool. Maybe that's one of the new colors or something for 1.8 or one of the options that I, that I neglected to see with my eyes already. All right, so... Um, we're just here traveling with it now. So um, earlier than the last video, I set up my buttons. So I'm going to hit number one. All right, I'm going to turn on my radiators and hit number two. Hit number three. Four. Turns my lights on. Five. Six. Seven. Hmm. I thought I had one set up to turn the lights on and off. the center one in. Anyway, I want to get this guy out of here. If there's anyone in there, I want to transfer Jebediah out. All right, so there, I just put Jebediah in there. And I'm going to come here, I'm going to transfer Bill Kerman into the same spot. So now I've put these guys in this little mid compartment and then I come up here and I hit the uh, switch vessel button and looks like we have Lee Loff, he's an engineer. Take him on an EVA. Get the space bar to let go. Retro rockets. And we hit the B button to board him. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to turn off that RCS. That always messes me up on docking. So it, it was just because that was kind of a long range approach, is why it didn't mess us up. If we were trying to do this little precision stuff, um, but that was really efficient how we did that. So we've got a new, new um, Kerbinot named uh, Leedorf, and there he is right there, or she, I stand corrected, can't always tell by the names, the genderfication, so anyway, we can get back into the orbital mode, which will probably mean prograde. There we go. Camera's kind of, let me see what my view is. Vessel view, locked, auto, free, orbital, chase. 
Let's do Chase. That's kind of fun. The, the Chase is, I like Chase. When you're uh, flying an airplane. Yeah, actually, I'm on a different view. Maybe locked. There we go. Or here. This is the one that people are most used to. So the planet's like a wall to your left. And if we were going to do that, we'd put the brown to our left, just like it was the planet, and the blue to our right, like it's the sky. And there we have our straight and level flight. And this is the way it probably looks the best in a demonstration or a video. The orientation that people can understand. And then, of course, when you're flying, you'll flip the Earth 90 degrees, and then you'll be flying like a like they would if they were in the craft. All right, so <clears throat> let's go to the map. And this is the... Uh, about the nine minute mark and I'm gonna set a new craft as a target and that's Haynard over here and you can see he's opposite of us now but what's interesting is we're pretty much lined up in so many directions so I'm gonna come down here to the periapsis I could have made a 300 adjustment right there. So sometimes if you bite it all off in one pass, um, you'll be going too fast. And then when you come back to me, you'll have this major drift when you go into corrective mode. All right, I'm just going to start by growing my... Uh, And what you can see is um, when these come together, they could change colors. Anyway, let's just try that, see what that does. It'll tell us as soon as we pass. So it looks like when we come back around, we'll be about there. So let's go ahead and come back to here. All right, so I did come half a planet apart, so I know it's going to be, I need to reduce it. So what I'm going to do, um, I was half a planet apart, I came more than half, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to pull on it a little bit in advance to try to get myself a little closer where I think I'm going to need to be. Now, the only thing I'm really using is uh, some type, I'm, it's, it's what we call eyeballing it. I went bam, bam, bam. So I'm going to try to do half of that and go wham like that. I mean, I don't even know if I, I can even explain it, but I just kind of know I have to bring it down. Anyway, it's staying, it's called uh, staying ahead of the game.
Now I don't know if you saw what I just did there. But I stayed ahead of the game. <clears throat> and since I did it on the mark, I just kind of set it up. And there, there's my uh, had failed miss. So let's just hurry up, spin back around, grab ourselves another free astronaut. Tycho not, cosmonaut, Kerbo not. <laughs> it's so funny how we're all so self-centered. Of course, the uh, the thing about the Cosmo and the Tycho and the Astro is the Cosmo and the uh, um, Astro are an example of the Cyrillic language colliding with the Roman Alpha language in America with two words or in English with two words for everything. It's because of both origins collide. It's because of, of where we came from. So um, we have two words for everything. We just have to know which ones to use in context. Target, target. Context to uh, the, the usage, which you can only learn that in culture books really don't teach that. It has to be practice. So which word do we use and when? All right, I'm burning it off to zero is the goal. You see me hammering it, right? Like I said, once we get going the same speed, now we can do a little more. So we just so happen to be pointed directly at the object. Let's just see if we can get a visual sighting on it. Um, I know it's out there. Sometimes if I have a colored backdrop and a backup, I can actually see it now. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at it a little slowly, like a 1.1 meters per second. Now let's go see when on the map when we're gonna um, actually meet. And it looks like that's as close as we're gonna get there. Let's go ahead and see if we can speed that up. So what I want to do, probably directly before I have a collision, is come right around and catch this thing coming at me. Let me see if I can get a mark on it. I don't know why I've lost its measure. Um, Did it blow up? Anyway, I'm flying at it pretty fast. I should slow down. I don't even know what's going on. Let me burn that speed back off. There. Now let me go find what's going on. Um, I had no idea it was like this really weird feeling like we were moving apart, not together. So, anyway, when in doubt. Alright, so I'm not really traveling at it. What I need to do is travel more like this, probably. And put that, see how I put that, uh, Ascension mark right on, not the ascension mark, the prograde mark, right on it like that. And the prograde marker tends to have a draw too, and then it moves around so that when it's lined up like that, just go put it right on zero. And then I just overshot it just a little bit. So um, the thing is, is that that marker pulls, this marker pushes. So it's an opposite. 
and I put it right back on zero at a less than one meter per second. So, wow, we're going to come pretty close there. So let's see if we can visually see the pass. There it is. So see, we're flying with it now. I don't know if you noticed it. And then, um, are we still? Yep, might as well come here. It should be just below us. You'll see it as the sun comes up. We're right on top of it, actually. So this is this is really good. Um, when we need to stop this, we just we'll gas that and cut the speed right off. And if you want to direct it back too, you can just go and then we'll intersect with it, so to speak. Like it's going one direction, we're going there too, and we'll meet you on the way. Now, a good thing to do might be to switch that to orbit and put it in retrograde. Raise this up like that. So, the rescue knot, and I'll switch to his capsule now. When he chooses to exit, he's in a good proximity to the rescue hatch, or the octagonal lander can. <clears throat> it's interesting. Let's set it as a target. You can see we're just traveling just very slowly to it. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, good. We have a pilot. Hainard's a pilot. Anyway, get him out. Let's just go ahead and let go. We're going to let this uh, object distance itself from us, and then I'm going to turn on my retro pack. I'm going to give it a little push. And then you just kind of glide up here like this. Grab. All right, look at that cool how the shadow comes over the top of us. And then we'll board. So what we have now is uh, let's go ahead and get out of here. We'll just shoot off like the moon. All right, so that's us accelerating uh, in in retrograde, and what that should have done is dropped our periapsis down. To about 53 and what we're gonna do is leave that put that on 50 okay 50 is about the point where it starts to get really hot and uncomfortable and we catch on fire 
so therefore if we kind of shoot for that then we have time to prepare for that moment which means we probably need to tuck this away um, we are going to catch on fire so I'm going to leave the radiators on um, we'll see uh, do a <clears throat> kind of an, a test to see uh, how much heat they can burn off so we'll go ahead and turn the crew lights off. I do need to check, make sure that the uh, parachutes were automatically set. This one was not, so that's a good check. We're going to set that to go off at 5 and open at about 2,000. We're going to set this one to go off at about 1,450. And open at about six and then we have to do this one also 1450 and six all right this was because we, we should have done this in the factory but <clears throat> every good pilot goes through his checklist right and make sure that is his, if his life depends on a certain component then it's his response, oh, and others, and a bunch of money <laughs> if you're being paid to take care of it. And not to mention this cool-looking piece of machinery that you should just be in love with. Um, it's your responsibility. And shame on me for not taking care of that. Sometimes I get busy in the explanation of it all. I'm going to drop this these, these guys back because... Um, we don't need to see all of them. Um, this is really good. I'd actually like to keep this on as long as possible because it's a heck of a counterweight um, when it has liquid in it and I don't know how aerodynamic I am in this craft meaning I might start spinning around I just don't know one of these I think was two the spotlight no two was the radiators let me make sure I just didn't turn this off yep two Three is the spotlight. Didn't even get to use it. That would be if we do we're doing dark side rescue operations or we need to signal the other craft, I guess. <laughs> right. Well, oh, I love my loud mechanical keyboard, isn't it great? It's it's it is more responsive for gaming than the touchpad um, <clears throat> sensitivity. I don't even know what they are. Anyway, I'm an old school typist. I used to have these big mechanical arms that came up and went pow and struck a ribbon and onto paper. You had a, a, an arm, which is basically like an old printing press, a little letter shape, and you had to push the buttons on the keyboard and the arms would come up and go hit the ribbon, which would raise up 80 words a minute. Really cool. The machine was far cooler than I ever became a typist. Um, so, everything had to be right. And the typewriters even had a, a signature of sorts because uh, the, the machines would have a different wear factors and different intensities. And like uh, one letter would be... I don't know if you scientifically analyzed them. You could tell the difference between this typewriter and this typewriter. So what would happen is the forensic scientists would have a document to read, and then they'd find a suspect or a person of interest in his typewriter, and they'd, take, they'd type a test off his typewriter and compare it and say, this came. This letter came from that typewriter. So, if you ever see where people cut up a bunch of little magazine things and glued them on to spell something out, that's why.
All right, so we've just dropped below space, so now it's going to be time to kind of check where we're at. Um, I'm thinking what I want to do is get over the top of Kerbin and hammer my engines if they haven't been consumed by them or if uh, I haven't been forced to jettison them by then. So Kerbin's at my 50,000 mark, but we have a problem. So let's go look at that problem. And that is that our 50,000 over the top of Kerbin Space Center is in decay. Look at that, it's dropping. So what's happening is I'm reducing speed right now. Actually, I'm increasing in speed. Um, all right. I'm getting sucked into the gravity well is what's happening. So that's why that's falling. That's the power of gravity. The same said power of gravity is also causing me to increase in speed. So the forces that oppose gravity in this situation are going to be the density of the atmosphere. Thick air. We're going to collide with it, and it's going to slow us down. Now, this is going to cause friction, and friction causes heat. This is why we catch on fire. And that's basically because we're trying to trade the speed. We're burning off speed. We're hitting atmosphere. The energy has to go somewhere. So it turns itself into the most volatile thing on in the universe, and that's the inferno, fire. And uh, anyway, so it's the conversion process. We got to trade speed for heat. And that's because we're resisting a force. We aren't actually, we're just mass. We're innocent. We're a big glob. We're a big weight. And we're falling. And gravity is affecting us. The more we weigh, the more gravity wants to pull us harder. So we're a big mass falling. We're innocent, but we will get caught in the fire. Now, what are the forces that be here? This is gravity pulling us in. The um, What's going to slow us down? Our parachute eventually. We will. We are in control of that. But that's We need to get to 256 before we can do that. <laughs> So right now we're going up a little under 10 times that. So we need to slow way down. So the forces that be are gravity. The forces against are going to be um, the thickness of the air causing resistance, which is going to cause heat, which causes us all concern. But we should have it under control. Because we are awesome and failure is not an option. <laughs> All right, twenty nine plus twenty nine is fifty.